I was bad at coding, like really bad. See this? It's my college transcript. I got a 2.6 GPA with zero job prospects. I wasn't a genius like this guy, and I definitely didn't start coding when I was five years old. So how did I go from thinking that Java was a type of coffee to landing a software engineering job at Microsoft? How did I stop sucking at coding? Well, I'll tell you how. There's a secret to being a good programmer, even a great programmer. And spoiler alert, it's not grinding 3,000 leak code problems. The first thing is, I embrace the suck. So what do we mean by that? This was actually a term coined by the Navy. They used it to remind people that greatness comes from messiness. I remember when I used to attend my data structures and algorithms class, I was always afraid of asking questions for fear of looking stupid in front of my classmates. Because of this, I kept all my questions to myself and ended up not doing well on the tests. My fear of failure or looking dumb got in the way of me actually succeeding. Many of the best software engineers that I know ask a lot of questions. They're more focused on understanding the problem and coming up with a solution. No matter the social cost. Why don't you land the booster rockets instead of letting them drop in the ocean? That's a cute idea, but uh, it's not technically possible. Why not? Even some of the greatest minds had a history of embracing the suck. Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb in a day. He's actually famous for saying, I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways that it won't work. What a guy. This here contraption will illuminate like the sun. In three, two, one. One second. Three, two, one. Ronald, this one's a dud. Okay. Never mind. Try 5,683. Okay. This light bulb. Moral of the story, take a chance on yourself and accept that growth isn't perfect. You don't need to know all the answers. You just have to be curious enough to ask. Why? The best way to do that is to just check yourself. When you learn something in class or watch a tutorial, try to re-explain the concept to yourself or to someone else, preferably a five-year-old. Remember I showed you what system.out.println was? Those were the keywords that you use when you want to write a sentence. If you can't do it, that means you need to ask more questions and go over the material again. It's a quick test of knowledge that'll really save you time in the long run. The next thing I did was treat coding like it was my actual job. So fast forward, after college, I graduated, of course, with a 2.6 GPA. During my first job, I made my first big mistake. I was given the responsibility to build some APIs on my own, as well as work with Azure to build a logic app. But I remember treating it like a school assignment. I would ask the manager during every stand-up meeting, when is this assignment due? Or how should I turn this assignment in? Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but words really do matter. First off, we weren't in school. But speaking as though I was in a classroom created a teacher-student dynamic between me and my manager. This was the wrong way to approach problem solving. With software engineering, other people don't always know the answers like they do in a classroom. You've been hired to find the answers. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. It took me over 10 hours to make this diagram. I just really need help. I'm not sure if this is the right answer. Let me see. What the heck is she talking about? Honestly, I have no clue what this is. She's just gonna have to figure it out herself. I don't know, that's what we pay you for. Figure it out. By treating your manager like a professor, you're also giving up control of who has the solution. Sure, there are some best practices you can learn, but every problem is different. Take initiative and treat each feature like a mini project. Take the time to understand the business requirements, be bold and ask dumb questions so you can start planning the feature ahead of time, and try to build something that fits your specific problem. If you're expected to process millions of requests, you may look into using a message queue rather than using traditional HTTP requests. Or maybe you're returning the same values over and over again in a UI and you want to cache some of those values to decrease the response time. Whatever it may be, creating solutions in an enterprise environment is very different to completing an assignment. Once I finally understood this, I became a lot more confident about my abilities. So the next thing is building relationships. Once you are working at a company, you need to prioritize making good relationships with people, especially if you wanna be on a career growth trajectory. I started to learn this early on, so I set up one-on-ones with everyone on my team. So what is your name and who's your manager here? Uh, Brian Flink. Andres is, one of my directs has been trying to like, um, I guess interact with me more than I think I'm comfortable with, you know? Unfortunately for me, that also meant listening to a lot of people's office gossip. And can you tell me a little bit about your relationship between <laughs> yourself and Brian? He's a, I think he's a good friend of mine. I think it's going fine. I guess we're learning boundaries I've with seen him. That. I don't want to. Oh, you noticed that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I noticed that. We talk all the time. 
and he's always responded to me. It's like, yeah, I had a good time. Yep. He's been texting me like, oh, wow, that's really weird. What are you going to say to him? I don't drink. Would you say that you guys hang out outside of work? I try to. I try to, you know, whenever I can. We're, I think we're good friends. We talk all the time. We hang out. That dude's weird, man. It got to a point where I needed to talk to a therapist to get the office politics off my chest. Thankfully, today's sponsor, BetterHelp, was there to save the day. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Interviewing and working in tech can be hard. I really struggled with my self-worth when I was failing so many interviews. Therapy was the one thing that helped me find my motivation again. You want to have someone to talk to about stress management, your goals in life, or even just someone that's there to listen to any sort of struggle that you're going through. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, a video chat, or even messaging if you prefer that whatever's the most comfortable version of therapy for you. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash puja. Clicking that link supports this channel and it'll also give you 10% off your first month so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. As for the office politics, I want to give a big shout out to my team as they were so gracious to help me out with the skit. And rip to Andres, here's to hoping he can actually find a real friend. Oh. Hey, um, uh, hey, I think I gotta get to a meeting. Uh, 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 all right, um. Sorry. Oh, we'll, we'll oh, catch up later. Yeah, I'll text you. Hey, uh, mm. the drinks thing, I just, yeah, I'm not feeling well. I think I might mm. have gotten COVID. No, I, that's fine. Yeah, we'll do it just next week. The flight and stuff. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, okay, bye. Okay, next thing is fail a lot. Once I started working at Target, everything changed. Up until this point, I had learned to be comfortable asking questions and also treating myself like a valuable member of the team. But I faced another problem. I was afraid to take risks and fail. Because of this, I would ask for permission for everything. I would ask if I should manually test it one more time. And I would even ask if I needed to monitor the pipelines all day after I'd merged my changes. Right, yeah, so this is what, this is the Oh my God, I have to go to the bathroom so badly. Should I ask him? Ugh, I'll just hold it. No, no, I really gotta go. Okay, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask. Can I go to the bathroom? I have to go really badly. <laughs> You, you don't need to ask permission. Just go to the bathroom. Oh, my tummy's grumbling. I'm so hungry. I feel like I've been working forever. Am I allowed to get up, go to the bathroom, go get something to eat? Should I ask him too, again? Oh, he's gonna get pissed off. I I'm just gonna ask. Can I go get lunch? I'm starving. I really need to eat something. Yeah, go eat your lunch. You Again, you, you don't need to ask permission. You're good. Right, yeah, so this is the direction that we're gonna go. Wait, sorry, one second. Oh my God, just, just go to the bathroom. For me and my team, this was really exhausting. I wasn't taking ownership of anything because I was so afraid to fail. And the way that I coped with this was to get someone else to sign off of everything that I did. When you first start at a company, it's okay not to be sure of every single process. But eventually, you need to be okay with doing things wrong. It's gonna happen, trust me. In fact, I've known principal engineers that joke around about bringing their entire production system down. In fact, the people that don't make mistakes are probably the ones that don't really do much on the team. It's bound to happen, so you may as well get used to making progress before making things perfect. Once I adopted failure as inevitable, I started taking risks and producing a lot more on the team. So the last tip is using grit. After adopting a growth mindset at Target, I started to look outwards to challenge myself to reach something that I'd never imagined. I wanted to work in big tech. Now, this is something that I'd never strived for, mostly because I never thought that I was smart enough. But then I read a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth, a social psychologist. She talked about how success wasn't defined by talent, but passion and perseverance in the face of adversity. 
This was really put to the test when it interviewed 10 times to try to break into big tech, first at Amazon, then Reddit, then Google, Meta, Microsoft, among others. I failed one after the other every single time. It didn't feel great. In fact, I felt like a complete loser. There were times where I'd call my parents crying because I didn't think I was good enough. They encouraged me to keep trying, but they also said they wouldn't think any less of me if I did quit. Initially, that's when I started making excuses for myself. It's okay not to get into these companies, and I didn't really want to work at Amazon or Reddit anyways. But eventually, I realized that it's not because I'm not capable. It's a test of my endurance. I saw online that it took people an average of five tries to get into Google, and even six to get into Meta. This situation wasn't unique to me, but it did show that companies were looking for people that were willing to persevere through failure, and that was a learned trait. Once I adopted this mindset, I was finally able to break into big tech. The lesson I want to leave you with today is to give yourself more credit. You're capable. Even if you're at a point where you feel like things are hopeless or you can't code or where you can't even find a job, things will work out eventually if you adopt these strategies. Opportunities are found when people embrace their flaws and unapologetically use their curiosity to their advantage. And I know you can too. Good luck. And don't forget, if you're struggling with your mental health or you just want to talk to someone, check out the BetterHelp link in the description. You won't regret it.